Hello, in this lecture we'll discuss partnerships and adding a new partner. Objectives, we will be able to Describe the process of adding a new partner to a partnership Create the journal entries to record the entry of a new partner to a partnership Define the effect of the journal entry to add a new partner on the trial balance accounts as well as explain the effect on capital accounts of adding a new partner to a partnership. All right, so we're going to take a look at this uh, through a problem. We're going to have a trial balance here, a simplified trial balance with a beginning balance, an ending balance. We're going to have the only asset being cash here. We've got the accounts payable being the only liability. We will be focusing down here in the capital accounts as we add a new partner to the partnership. We have the income statement down at the bottom with the revenue and the expenses. Note there is no revenue and expenses at this time because when we put the new partnership in there, we want to think about at basically a post-closing child balance uh, that has had the income statement closed out to the capital accounts. Also note that we have debits represented by non-bracketed numbers or positive numbers and credits represented by bracketed numbers or negative numbers and therefore we are able to have the debits minus the credits equal zero. So we're able to simplify and um, have less space to see our balancing process here. Clearly there's no income, net income on this report because we have closed out the income statement to the capital accounts. We also have our assets equaling our liabilities and our equity. It's important to note that when we think about the partnership and adding a new partnership that we consider the fact that the equity accounts are equal to the assets minus the liabilities. So the 550,000 minus the 10,000 will equal the capital accounts here. So the capital accounts represent, of course, the book value, the net value, the assets minus the liabilities of the company. We will be adding a new partner to the partnership. It will be uh, a new partner will be R here. <laughs> so we have the MD and L partner share income and loss at a three to five ratio. We're going to first discuss what that means. What is a three to five ratio? And then we're going to add the new partnership. The new partnership partner is going to be on the books or uh, enter the company at a 25% interest. That interest is what is agreed on uh, between the partner the new partner and the existing partner. So they come to an agreement of a 25% interest in exchange for 140,000 that the new partner will be giving to the partnership. So the partnership's gonna receive 140,000. The partnership is then going to give a 25% interest to the new partner, new partner being R, existing partners being M, B, and L. So first, let's think about what this means. What does it mean to have a three to five ratio? That's the current ratio before the new partner comes in. So before R comes in, we've got our three partners uh, with a three to five ratio on the income and lost split. Now, when we think about splitting income and loss, if there's two partners, obviously the easiest split would be a 50-50 or 60-40 or some kind of flat ratio. If we're thinking about uh, it's it's easier to think about ratios sometimes than percentages, however, because ratios can, can be uh, more specific in some cases if it's not an even percentage number. Therefore, if we see something like this where it says 2 colon, uh, I mean 3 colon, 2 colon 5, then we could calculate this something like this. M's calculation would then be the 3 divided by and then there's 3 plus 2 plus 5 is 10 divided by 10 or 0.3 or if we move to decimal places two places over 30 percent and then we have the same for b so b has two out of the three plus two plus five so we're going to say the two out of 10 and that is the two we'll move the decimal place over the 20 percent and then of course l the final one we'll do it out here and we'll say five out of the 3 plus 2 plus 5, 10, if we move the place decimal place over 50%. So we're having a 30, 20, 50. This happened to be even, so we could have expressed it as 30, 20, 50 uh, ratio, which of course adds up to 100. But uh, it, sometimes it won't be even, so sometimes it's easier to represent or it's more precise to represent as a ratio. So if you see something represented in that format, then that's how you basically break up. You're going to add it up. 3 plus 2 plus 5 is 10. So it's 3 out of a 10. 
2 out of 10, 5 out of 10. That's how you come up with your percents. It's also a bit smaller or, uh, le uh, you know, takes up less space to present it in this format as well. Then if we look at the capital accounts, we see the capital accounts here. These are just the accounts that are given in the trial balance. So obviously here is the M's capital account, 151.2. Here's B's capital account, 124.2. And here's L's, 264.6. Now, one thing to note that the capital accounts do not match necessarily this ratio. This ratio is having to do with the income and loss distribution. How do we allocate income and loss be between the three partners? Does not have to do with the capital accounts. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, uh, they could have put in different amounts when they first entered the partnership. They can also draw out different amounts that aren't in relation to this profit to these ratios. Therefore, uh, the, it's very going to be very rare that the capital accounts are going to coincide with the profit and loss ratios. Just keep that in mind. The profit and loss ratios, these ratios, have to do with how they are going to allocate the income and loss that is generated through the partnership to each individual partner. It does not govern necessarily the amount of money uh, that is drawn out of the partnership and does not govern the uh, ratio that uh, the capital accounts must remain in for the partnership. So now that we have that taken a look at, we can start to work on our journal entry. So the journal entry, we can start thinking about the journal entry and then once we run into a problem, we're gonna have to do some calculations. So let's think about the journal entry first, go through our normal steps, then see where the problem happens and do some calculations to figure this out. So we got the new partnership that's gonna come on the books for 140,000. Therefore, we ask our normal question, is cash gonna be affected in this transaction? Yeah, the partnership's gonna receive 140,000. Therefore, cash is going to go up. Cash has a debit balance represented by the fact that it does not have brackets. It's going to go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So the journal entry is going to start off with a debit to cash. We're going to debit cash. That's going to increase the cash account. So we know that much. And we know that the new partner is going to come on the books. He's partner R in this case. And they're the new partner. So we would think that obviously the new, if they put in 140000 we would have to credit R's capital account for R coming on to the partnership. And that is true, we are gonna credit the capital account, however, we're not gonna credit it for 140,000 necessarily. In this case, we're gonna credit it for 170. That's kind of the part of the problem. So we'll explain why we got that 170, and then we've got this difference that we're gonna to have to deal with as well. So here's the issue. Why, why if they gave 140, might we uh, credit 170 well, the new partner is, is not going to be on the books exactly for what was given. We agreed that we were going to give a 25% interest of the partnership for cash of 140. So we need to define what a 25% of the partnership is. And the way we do that is we take the book value of the partnership, which is the assets minus the liabilities, which of course also equals the capital accounts. So assets minus liabilities, 550,000 minus the 10,000, 540,000 equals the equity account. So here's the equity accounts. If we list those equity accounts here, here they are. We add up to 540,000 assets minus liabilities, book value of the company, theoretic value that the partners would receive if they liquidated the punk company and walked away uh, with the cash. Again, that's just a book value, however, probably very accurate in this case, because all we have is cash on the book. But if we had other things on the book like equipment, it's, it's not likely that we will sell the equipment for the exact book value. So this is the book value of the partnership, theoretical assets minus liabilities. And then the new partner is coming on the books for 140. So now, of course, cash is going to go up by 140. Therefore, assets minus liabilities is going to be what it was, 540 plus the new 140 that the new partner is coming on the books for. And therefore, we now have a book value of assets minus liabilities or a capital account balance that needs to be allocated of 680. And we decided that we were gonna give a 25% interest of the book value of the partnership for $140,000. Therefore, we're gonna take 25% of the 680. That's how much we're gonna to allocate to R. And of course, the 680,000 times 25% will give us the 170 that we talked about over here. So here's the 170. That's what the new partner is going to be on the books for. Even though 
the partner only gave us 140. And what you might be thinking now is, well, why would the existing partners agree to this? This doesn't make any sense. If the book value of the partnership, assets minus the liabilities, is worth 170, why would we allow R to be included in the partnership when they only give us 140? And the reason for that, there could be different reasons for it, but it might be that R is coming on the books with some intangible assets, or maybe R has some particular name recognition which will generate future revenues uh, that are not foreseen in this calculation. And therefore, the existing partners, in order to get R on board, are willing to give up a 170% interest, even though they're only receiving 140. So these two things will not always match. Most of the times, they will not match. And now we're faced with another problem here, which is that the debits do not equal the credits. We're going to need some more debits of the 170 minus the 140, which will be 30. And how are we going to allocate that out? Well, we're going to have to reduce the other uh, company, the other owners, the other owners' capital accounts, the other partners' capital accounts, I should say. So we're going to have to debit them, so that 30000 So now the question is, well, how much are we going to debit uh, MB and L in order to, of the 30000 that we need? And we will do that in accordance with their profit sharing. So note what we have here. We've got this 30000 If we look at that calculation, what we're saying is the new partner was put on the books for... Take it, we can look at it either way. We could say the new partner was on the books for 140. Uh, that's how much they, they paid, and we put them on the books for 170. Therefore, we have a difference of this 30,000. We're going to break that difference out between 30% to M, so times 0.3 gives us 9,000. So that's where this 9,000 is. If we take this 30, oops, we take the 30,000 times the 0.2. 20%, we get the 6,000, and then of course if we take the 30,000 times the 0.5, that'll give us the 15, the 9 plus the 6 plus the 15 add up to the 30,000. Therefore, we will then break out this 30,000 debit over here that is needed between M, B, and L in accordance with the 9, 6, and 15 breakout. Therefore, we have this uh, well, this will be the ending capital accounts. So we'll have this breakout. Debit of 9,000 to M, debit of 6,000 to B, and debit of 15 to L. So that's going to reduce their capital accounts. They are not necessarily happy about this, of course, because now that reduces the book value of the company that is basically owed to them. Let's take a look at what this would look like if we posted this to a trial balance. We're going to post this journal entry. So. Here's, the, here's what the journal entry would look like, and we're posting it uh, in accordance with our worksheet here. Let's uh, post this out, talk through it, and see if it does what we expect it to do. What do we expect it to do? We expect it to create an Indian capital account after we post this journal entry of R170 and then M1422, B1182, and L2496, thereby giving us a capital account of 680, which is equivalent to the book value of the company assets minus liabilities so here's cash we're debiting cash and we're going to debit cash cash has a debit balance we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it therefore cash went up to the 690,000 and then we put R on the books so here's R on the books we're going to credit over the uh, 170,000 so we're going to put that down here from zero up in the credit direction to 170,000 new partner on the books for 170. Then we're breaking out that 30,000 in the 9, 6, and 15 to M, L, N, M, B, and L, respectively. So we got the 9,000 here. Uh, note that we have a credit balance in the capital account. We're reducing it by doing the opposite thing to it. Therefore, M is going to have to eat or reduce their capital account to 142.2. So it was going to receive the 151, that was the value, and it went down. So then B is going to get the 6,000. So B has a credit balance of 124.2 we're bringing the balance down by the 6,000 to 118.2 and then L here has a has a debit of 15 so they had a 246.6 credit minus the 15 brings the balance down now you'll note that our ending trial balance here now ties out to our capital account balances over in our worksheet 
So a problem could ask this in either of two ways. As, as an accountant or a bookkeeper, we're often looking at the trial balance and we may want to see stuff, of course, in terms of journal entries. And we also may very well see this in same information in terms of a table. It's good to be able to understand both ways of seeing this. Also note that once again, still the book value is going to be the 960 minus the 10 will add up to the capital account balance. So now we're going to look at a variation of the same problem. Same exact thing. It's going to be very similar except for now we're going to bring a new partner R on the books. Same 25% interest that the partnership has agreed. The partnership and the new partner have agreed on this in a market environment. But the new partner is going to be on the books and give the partnership the 270000 So now the agreement is that the partnership will give a 25% interest in the partnership in exchange for uh, the new partner R giving the partnership 270000 So let's see what the journal entry would look like. Same process. I'm going to talk about the, the journal entry until we hit kind of a problem and then go through our worksheet to see if we can figure out and fix the problem. So first of all, of course, the question that we always have is the uh, cash affected in this journal entry of bringing the new partner in. And of course, yes, the cash is going to be affected. We're going to receive 270000 in the partnership. Therefore, cash is a debit balance. We're going to make cash go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So we know that's going to be part of the journal entry. We can put that, lay that out in the front, right up front. We also know that the new partner is going to be, be entering the partnership. So the new partner put in 270000 You would think that, of course, we would credit the new partner for the investment, just like when we create uh, an investment or anytime an investment happens. You would think we would credit ours capital account, which we will. However, we will not credit necessarily for 270. In this case, we're going to credit for 2025. Why? That's, that's going to be the question. Well, why are we going to do that? How are we going to come up with that? Let's do our worksheet in order to answer that question. So what we have here is our 30, 20, 50. We won't go over calculating those ratios again. That's, of course, the 3 to 5 ratio. And we have our capital accounts balances, which will be just these balances here. So we've laid these balances out in terms of a table now for the three existing partners before the new partner enters. Note the capital account balance of 540 is equal to the book value of the company being the assets minus the liabilities. Assets minus liabilities, 540. That's the book value of the company that is allocated to the partners in this uh, way. And note again that the, the reason we can do this is because we have closed out the revenue and expenses. So this is a post-closing trial balance. This is basically the balance sheet accounts that we're looking at. So then the new partner comes on the books and it's going to give the partnership 270,000. Therefore, the book value, the cash is going to go up, the assets are going to go up by 270, and the assets minus liabilities then will be at 810,000. That means that our new capital accounts at the end of the day, after the transaction has happened, needs to be at 810,000. We said that the new partner was going to get a 25% interest of that, Therefore, if we take that 810 times 25%, that's the agreement that we have. The new partner is going to be on the books for the 202,000. So that's where this number is coming from. So now uh, we the, the new partner gave the partnership 270. We're putting the new partner on the books at 2025. And you might be asking, well, why would the new partner agree to these terms? Why would the new partner, I mean, if the assets minus the liabilities equals the value in the, in the company and the new partner is only going to receive 2025 of value in the company why would the new partner then give the company or the partnership uh, 270,000 and the reason for that might be well uh, there could be some intangible assets on the books or maybe the the books are not valued uh, exactly at fair market value as is perceived by the individuals in the transaction. So maybe the, the current partnership has a good name and has good uh, intangible assets being goodwill or something like that that will uh, will generate future revenue and therefore the new partner, partner R, may be willing to pay more than what is being allocated to them through the agreement. So once again, this, these things will, will rarely match they could match, that would be a very easy journal entry to make, but more often than not, they won't, and the agreement will be uh, something that we'll have to differ in this way, 
Now, of course, the difference being that the debits are greater than the credits. We're gonna have to add some credits here. How are we gonna add the credits? Who's gonna uh, receive the credits? Well, this time, MB and L are gonna receive an increase in their capital accounts because uh, they received more cash than they're allocating to the new partner. So that means that we have this 67.5 difference. So if we look at the calculation here, what is happening is that we, we the new partner is receiving 270,000 in cash and they're giving R a 2025. Therefore, we have this 67.5 that we need to allocate to M, B, and L in accordance with their profit sharing ratios. So we got the 67.5, we're gonna multiply times times 0.330%. That gives us the uh, 20,002 right there. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. So we've got the uh, 67.5 times B's capital account, 0.2 profit sharing, gives us the 13.5 there. And we'll do this one more time. And we have L, so we've got the 67.5 times 0.5 for L, and that would be the 33,750. Therefore, this 67.5 will be allocated to M, B, and L at 20,250, 135 and 33,750, respectively. If we take a look at the transaction, then our trial balance over here, we need to then increase the account balances like so. So we will go up. Obviously, R is going to be on the books for the amount allocated to R, that 270. Uh, that w I'm sorry, the 2025 that we're putting R on the books for. And then we are going to increase the capital account balance from 151.2 plus uh, the 20,000 in this case to the 171,450. We're increasing the capital account balances. In terms of a journal entry then, to increase the credit balance, we will then credit which of course is also the plug that we need in order to make this reconcile. So there's the 2250, the 135, the 33750, two MB and L respectively, which will increase their capital accounts. Let's see what that would look like in terms of the trial balance. So here's that same journal entry. Here's that same worksheet. Let's see if it does what we expect it to do when we post it to our worksheet here. What do we expect it to do? We expect our M, B, and L's capital accounts to be 2025, 171, 450, 3, 137, 7, and 298, 350 after we post the journal entry respectively. So here's the cash. Cash is going up. Cash is a debit balance. We're making it go up in the debit direction. So it goes from 550 to 820. Then we post ours capital account. So here's the new partner going from zero, of course, up in the credit direction by 202,500. The company now, in essence, kind of like owes our the 202,500. And then uh, M's capital account is going to go up in the credit direction. So with the credit, we're doing the same thing to it, increasing the capital account from 551,200 up by 20,250 to 171,450. Then we've got B's capital account here. So B has a credit balance of 124,2. We're doing the same thing to it, being a credit of 13.5, increasing the capital account to the 137,700. And then L's capital account balance has a credit balance. We are gonna do the same thing to it, increasing that capital account balance from 264.6 by 33.750 to the nine or the 298.350. Now, of course, the assets, the cash, minus the liabilities, accounts payable, will equal our new uh, capital account balances, which will then add up to the 810. So we are now able to describe the process of adding a new partner to the partnership, create the journal entries to record the entry of a new partner to a partnership, define the effect of journal entry to add a new partner on the trial balance accounts, and explain the effect on the capital accounts of adding a new partner to a partnership.